weight since Texas. I prefer to think of it as having grown more substantial. You mean fat. Cut. <laughs> 25 years doesn't dull that tongue of yours. 25 years. Last spring. Hard to believe, ain't it? Travis, pocket, buoy. All of them gone. But not forgotten. You remember that time you pulled that toothpick knife of yours on Bowie and he sliced the shirt right off your back? But not before I cut him a necessity flap in his britches. Uh, it was wild. I never thought you were going to live long enough to get gray hair. I never thought I'd grow so many. So, Lucius, I know you don't hold town life in the highest regard. What brings you to Sweetwater? What, a man can't pass through and say hello to an old friend without being asked why? An old prairie dog like you, not a chance. Won't have nothing to do with that map making. The army had me and the boys do a couple months back, would it? Sorry, but my business in town is what they call military secret. You wouldn't want to go get me shot now, would you? There was a time. <laughs> but as the years go by, friends becomes a dwindling commodity. She was right about me in town, though. And they do satisfy two a man's basic appetites. And food is only one of them. <laughs> it was good seeing you, Teaspoon. Good seeing you, prior dog. Stay out of trouble. Might as well ask a horse to fly. Hurry, he'll be back any minute. Someone's coming. I heard about you, You have taken all the love making out of me. What is your game? I'm waiting, son. <coughs> no! No, Johanna, no, please, no! Shut up! Just shut up! It wasn't me, Grace, I swear, I swear. Just get a hold of yourself. Do you hear me? Get a hold of yourself. I want you to go downstairs and you get Bo. Do you understand? Now go. <laughs> Is this what you're looking for? Looks like a river. What are we going to do with him? Put that away. I'm running a brothel here, not a funeral parlor. It's me, Grace. Oh, one I should come in? Take him out of here and lose him in some alley. I guess Amy was too much for him, huh? He's dead, Grace. He's dead. Dead drunk. And that's the way I want you to make it look when you both carry him out. Go on. I'm sorry that I dropped him, Grace. I'm really sorry. That's all right, Bo. He didn't feel a thing. Boys gotta learn to quit that. Quit what? Hankering after fun. It'll be the ruination of you. What are you talking about, Teaspoon? 
Ask and ye shall hear. And hear and hear and hear. I'm talking about things. Most people never get enough, no matter how much they got. Case in point. You boys got everything you could possibly need, and here you are gawking and slavering over more. I'll tell you, it's like a disease. Pretty soon, your life ain't about living and people, it's about things. And after a while, your things ain't enough for you. So sure as I'm standing here, you'll hunger after somebody else's thing. And that is what causes war. We was just admiring the saddle, Teaspoon. That is a pretty nice looking saddle, isn't it? No, please. Oh, no, you don't. Stop, please. No, stop. You're hurting hey, me. Excuse me. James. I paid my money. Stop. You've got no right. No. trouble here. There's no trouble, Grace. My new friend here. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy just took care of it. Where the hell have you been, Bo? Oh, I, I was just getting something to eat. You're always getting something to eat. It looks like I could use more professional help around here. What do you say, handsome? Want a job? The pay's not bad and there are certain benefits. The offer's tempting, ma'am, but I already got a job. Too bad. If you ever change your mind, the offer stands. Jimmy, we're waiting. You know how boys are. Always finding trouble. I gotta go. Come back soon. You're welcome anytime. Ma'am. I think she likes you. Of course she does. It's her job. For the rat press, she like you even more. What's that supposed to do? Let that guy beat on her? Well, sometimes it comes with territory. Still don't make it right. She is a lady, you know. Of the night. I know that, Emma. But like you always say, folks is folks. Never mind what I say. Besides, we don't pay you enough to fancy a woman like that. Well, I've been saving up. I got business with Teaspoon, Emma. Will you excuse us, please? Certainly. What's the matter, son? Lucius Corcoran was found dead yesterday. He'd been stabbed. Well. Damn. Sorry, Marshal. We go back a long way. His, uh, his dying wasn't having anything to do with that map making we was doing on the Pawnee River, would it? More than likely. A teaspoon, what I'm about to tell you has to be kept in the strictest confidence. It sounds like army talk. What the hell's going on? Well, I guess you know the Plains Indians have been acting up some lately. Well, the army's worried about what could happen if the tribes united went on a war path. So they buried a cache of guns, powder, and artillery in a secret underground location not far from here. And on that location's what got Lucius killed, huh? Washington says he didn't know anything about it. But they think a map he was carrying might have fallen into the wrong hands. And whose hands would those be? Well, a woman by the name of Grace Rollins. She runs a new cat house on the edge of town. Grace Rollins? You know her? Not personally. I know of her. You want to tell me what in the name of God a woman like that wants with heavy artillery? Well, that arsenal's worth a fortune, Teaspoon. So peddling flesh ain't her true calling, is that it? Your guess is as good as mine. Now, I know this ain't easy, Teaspoon, but 
When was the last time you saw Lucius Corcoran? Town a couple days ago. Did he have any uh, business at Grace Rollins' place? Teaspoon? Huh? Well, known Lucius wouldn't surprise me none. Well, did he tell you anything that might help us track his killers? I can recall we was mostly talking about old times, is all. Well, your riders cover a lot of ground. If they come across anything unusual, like prospectors in an unlikely place or a large group of wagons, anything like that, you let me know right away. Be glad to, Sam. Thanks. A teaspoon? I'm real sorry about your friend. So am I. My prayer, dog. Ain't too many of us left. I think I'm finally getting somewhere. Yes, that's it. <laughs> How's it going? Very well, thank you. You matched it? Our information was accurate. The arsenal is buried on the bed of the Pawnee River, about, oh, 20 miles from here. Grace, if it's uh, buried under the river, then um, how, how are you going to get at it? Don't worry, sweetheart. The river's been dry for years. Hardesty, Otis, you take these and ride out there. Don't touch anything. If the arsenal's there, we'll take wagons and clear it out tomorrow. Our biggest haul yet. Don't go in there, Jimmy. And why not? Last time a friend of mine went in there, he'd come out dead. Probably because he was too old to handle it. He was stabbed to death. Sorry. No more than me. Let's go. I'll catch up with you in a minute. You hear what I said? I don't want you going in there. I heard you, but I'm on my own time. When you signed on with the Express, you agreed not to discredit the company. I ain't gonna discredit the company. I'm just gonna say hello to a friend. Hobnobbing with trash like that is a discredit to the company. Son, I'm just trying to help you. Give me some room. All right. Coming or not? Seating him. You know Jimmy. Yeah. Nice to the gentleman, honey. Don't you want to know what the job is? Wild Bill. I asked around about you. They say you're good with a gun. Well, they say a lot of things. They also say you're a hothead. <laughs> this don't look like Sunday school. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm a bit on the wild side myself. 
So anyway, when this damn pops more leaks and he's got fingers, this here Dutch boy's got himself a hell of a predicament. Anyone want to hear how he gets out of it? <laughs> Where's the mate? Huh. Where you been, Jimmy? I've been around. You all right? Never better. You know, I didn't appreciate your attitude back in town. Like I said before, as long as I do my work, what I do in my spare time, and how I feel about it ain't none of your business. Jimmy. What the hell's gotten into you? Nothing. Just waking up is all. You got no call talking a teaspoon like that. Oh, golly, that's what I'd expect coming from you, kid. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind. No, really, I want to know. All right. It ain't just you. It's all of you. Look at yourselves. Risking your lives every day, busting your butts for what? The pay? <laughs> you know as well as I do what that amounts to. He treats us like children and wants us to thank him for it. Well, I'm sorry. Because I ain't going to do it. And if any of you had any backbone, you wouldn't either. I don't know what's come over you, but I don't believe you mean that. For matter, kid, the truth hurt. Jimmy, for God's sakes, look around you. We're your family. Doesn't that mean anything? <laughs> That's a laugh. All I see is a bunch of sheep. Damn it! That's enough! What's the matter, Cody? You want to come after me? Is that what you want to do? Come on. Oh, yeah? I'm waiting. Settle down! Settle down! Yeah, I don't know what the hell's the matter with you, but I don't like it. Maybe all this wild bill stuff's gone to your head. I don't know. But it's pretty clear. You don't belong here no more. What are you saying, Teaspoon? I'm saying you're fired. Now get out. I said get out. Jimmy. Hey, Mom. If he's going to come back, it's going to be the way he was, or not at all. Mister, but you lose. Sonny, where I come from, a full house beats a flush. Last time I looked, there was only one king of spades to a deck. Past your bedtime? When you walked out last night, you stepped on a few toes. <laughs> and you came all the way over here just to tell me that. <laughs> I came to ask you to think about what you're doing. It may not be too late. I suppose Teaspoon feels the same as you. I don't think so. If we all talk to him, he'll change his mind. Now I'm done talking. You don't belong here. 
Lou, I don't belong anywhere. It's as good a job as any, and it does have some advantages. Jimmy, please come back. Come back to what? A hard bunk, eating dust for wages, never a thank you. Well, thank you, but this is more my style. Sonny, this is a place of business. Either have a drink, take a hand of cards, or get out. When I'm finished, Bo, show the boy out. Put him down. I'll kill him, Grace. Bo? Tell him not to point that gun no more at me. Leave it alone, Bo. Better keep him away from me. Don't worry about Bo. He does what I tell him. It's me you have to worry about. Are you sure we got the right place? Uh, it sure looks like it. Well, then this map must be wrong. Either that or it's deeper. 50 cannon. 1,000 carbine, 500 kegs of powder. Where the hell is it? Well, it's got to be here someplace. You want to double back? Maybe there's another spot down the wash that looks like this. I wouldn't want to tell Grace we weren't here. Unless we were sure we was right. Hey, you been out here long? Long enough. Did you find anything interesting? Depends on what you call interesting. That canteen there. Where'd you get that? Come on, Zach. Man asked you a question, mister. Jimmy, you shouldn't have bought this for me. Why not? <laughs> it's my money. Grace would be mad if she knew. I think she likes you. Well, you know, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Your name. <laughs> you know, it's Sparrow. I'm sorry, but I just can't call you that. That's the name Grace gave me when I first came to work for her. It doesn't suit you, you know? Well, where is it? It's Amy. Amy? Oh, it's nice to meet you, Amy. Must not be much sin in the world, because there sure are a lot of stones being cast. Jimmy, you've got to get away from Grace while you still can. Why, Amy? Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. It's too late for me, but you've still got a chance. You don't know Grace. The things she's done and the things she's capable of. Please, get away. Whoa, whoa. Well, look who it is. Hold this. Forget it, Cody. He's not the Jimmy we knew. Jimmy? I'd like to talk to you, alone. Whatever you got to say, she can hear it. All right. I don't want to sound high and mighty, but the simple truth is you acted like an ass last night. For the life of me, I can't figure out why. That's what you wanted to tell me? That. And if me and the others did something to cause a grudge, well, we sure would like to know about it, Jimmy. Go home, Cody. Come on, darling. Let's get out of here. Cody! This is a waste of time. He didn't know nothing. Well, he had that army canteen. So? Well, that mule of his couldn't travel more than 10 miles a day. He picked this up this morning, like he said, and it can't be too far. Well, 
I just about given up on the two of you. Grace, we were just taking a walk. I don't pay you to walk, Sparrow. I'm sorry. Jimmy. Remember what I said. You shouldn't waste your time on that sort. On what sort should I waste my time on? You have to know where your interests lie. I have big plans for you. For both of us. If you play your cards right. What's the matter, Cody? The meal ain't been invented you didn't hunger for. You know what the matter is. Hit up. We've been all over that subject. No use in rehashing it again. Maybe not, Teaspoon, but I think you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Now, William, we all care about Jimmy, but I want it's you to... It's all right, Emma. Right. Seems we got a pot on the stove. Best we take the lid off before it boils over. Now, you were saying? I just don't see why, if I get Jimmy to apologize, you still won't take him back. Cody, you're a good friend, and I know what you're feeling. Fact is, I got some of them same feelings myself toward the boy. Like I said, since you're always talking about things like forgiveness, how come you can't bring yourself to do it? Well, it ain't as cut and dried as it looks, Ike. Jimmy got himself in with some bad company, and he done it out of choice. Thing is, I was hoping my boys would grow up straight, that you'd all make the right choices. I also feared that maybe one or two of you fall by the wayside. Seems like that's what's happened here. I knew he was wild. Guess he's got a little bit of me in him. I thought I was teaching him control. Guess I was wrong. You know what gets me about you, Teaspoon? Even when you're wrong, you're right. Come in. You wanted to see me, Grace? Come here, Jimmy. Your future. Oh, I usually don't think that far ahead. Maybe it's time that you did. Tell me something, Jimmy. Do you like working for me? I don't have any complaints so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been waiting a long time for someone like you. You don't have to always be a hired hand. We're a lot alike, Jimmy. You're tough, and you're smart, if a bit inexperienced. We could be very good together. What? Otis and Hardesty are back, Grace. Uh, remember, you asked me to tell you. Remember, Marshal, it's imperative that Corcoran's math not fall into the wrong hands. Well, do you want my deputy to continue watching the Rollins woman? No, I'll, I'll take it from here. The Army appreciates your cooperation, Marshal. It's my pleasure, Colonel Brown. Mr. Brown, please, Marshal. Right, Mr. Brown. Okay, good night, then. Good night. Uh, sorry, Miss Rollins, we, uh... Search ten miles up that wash, but... Uh... There's a lot of good hiding places up there. There were very few markings on that map. I wonder if it was complete. Crazy, the army sent someone after Cochran. He's been poking around town asking questions. Who is he? Name's Brown. He's a colonel, but he's out of uniform. How do you know his army? I saw him about a year ago. He was in uniform then, all spit and polish. Career man. That kind never leaves. You and Bogo talk to him. Part of the map is missing, he may have it. Bo, let's go have some fun. 
There is one other possibility. That older gentleman that runs the Pony Express, what's his name? Teaspoon Hunter. He was a good friend of Corcoran's. My source in Washington tells me that sometimes the Army uses the Pony Express to scout out locations for the depots. Jimmy, were you ever a part of anything like that? Yeah, we did some map making out on the Pony, but nothing real scientific. I want you to go to the Pony Express station. Take the boys with you. Get Mr. Hunter to trust you again and bring him back here. Is that all right? Hell, I don't know him anything. Come on, boys. Oh, Grace, he did save my life once. He doesn't have to get hurt, does he? Don't worry. All I want's information. Then he's yours. What's the matter? I think my horse picked up a stone. I hope you ain't too, uh, partial to that teaspoon, fella. What are you talking about? When Grace wants information from somebody, she usually has Bo talk to him. And when Bo's finished. <laughs> Your mount looks all right. Let's go. Why don't you boys get down? What do you mean? We ain't going nowhere. And don't do anything stupid. What happened to you? Those fools you sent me with nearly got me killed. And your friend? I just about had Teaspoon talked into coming when Hardesty got antsy and forced to fight. I'm lucky to be alive. We're four express riders, and obviously those boys handled themselves quite well. Otis and Hardesty? Dead. But, Grace, I barely got out myself. Well, thanks, Jimmy. You better go and get that cleaned up. Well, I guess we're lucky we sent him. Maybe. Jimmy, you in there? I hate this. Jimmy. Jimmy. Get all our men in every wagon you can find. We're going to take that arsenal. What if the colonel was lying? Bo. Uh -uh. And your boy here, Carl? Let me take care of him. I'm sure you will. Next. Uh, thank you, ma'am. But I got a previous engagement. By any chance, could you tell me which room Jimmy Hickok's in? Uh, last one on the right. Thank you. It's no accounting for taste. Cody, what the heck are you doing here? I came for you. You gotta get out of here. I know you're wild and I respect that and all, but you don't belong here. Now get your stuff and let's go. 
And what if I don't want to? Then we'll have to slug it out, I guess. Oh, I don't know how to explain this, Cody. You see, I wasn't really fired. It was all kind of an act, you know what I mean? An act? Why? So I could get hired on here. It wouldn't have anything to do with something called the arsenal, would it? Who told you about that? I heard the Rollins woman talking about it outside. Now, what's going on, Jimmy? What'd she say? This is important, Cody. I don't know. Something about a colonel and how they're going to get a bunch of wagons and empty it out before sunup. Now, what's going on? You hear where they're headed? No. All right. Let's go. Jimmy, where are we going? Won't tell me what the heck's going on. Later. Who's he? Must be Colonel Brown. He's an army investigator. Looks like a grizzly got at him. Next thing to it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I ain't one of them. I know about Lucius Corcoran, and I'm trying to help. This here's one of my friends. Hold on, Colonel. We'll get help. Tell Marshal. Pawnee. Got us. Stop her. Colonel, where? Where on Pawnee Flats? Base of Medicine Rock. Let me guess, that's the grizzly. I do like he says. Kind of worries me when a pointed gun don't bother him, man. This one goes between the eyes. What are you looking for under there? Cody, watch out! <laughs> worked well together. It's a pity it has to come to this. Oh. Jimmy, you'd better hurry. Simpkins has a group of wagons heading toward the Pawnee River. Cody, look at the sheriff. Be all right. I'll be fine. 
What's you all worry about? You're a good woman, Amy. Don't ever let anybody else tell you any different. Look like you painted yourselves with honey and went into a bear's den. Something like that. Sam, Jonas Simpkins is heading toward the Pawnee River to dig up that army arsenal. You sure about that? Yeah. What about Grace Rollins? Dead. So is Colonel Brown. Do you know where it is? Medicine Rock, but we'll need some help. We'll get the boys. If they're still talking to me. Somebody want to tell me what the heck's going on here? All right, let's get some help on that cannon over here. Easy with that powder! Watch back those carbines and three stacks! You all be careful with that gunpowder, you hear? Let's move those rifles. Hey, boys, get those cannons loaded! Hey, man, let's get it loaded! So hoping there wasn't going to be this many. I don't want to get you kids in this kind of mess. Not much else you could have done, Sam. Two days ride to the nearest army post. Hey, man, let's get it loaded! Cody. You see that petter keg in front of the lead wagon? Think you could hit it with that hawk in ears? On my worst day. All right, do it. Pieces. 350, 400 yards. We got nothing to lose but trying. you, Mr. Spoon. You and Jimmy working for the Army all along. Why didn't you tell us? Well, I'm sorry, but there's too much at stake. One slip from any, and Jimmy could have been killed. People like this, best to keep everybody in the dark. Yeah, so why on earth did you pick this hothead? Grace offered me a job, remember? It was a chance we couldn't pass up. So all that stuff you said about Teaspoon and us was just an act? Well, maybe not all of it. I knew he was bluffing all along. Right, Cody. I don't know whether you boys are her, but the Army may give Mr. Hickok here and, uh, <clears throat> yours truly, a medal. <laughs> Pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, teaspoon.
Excuse me. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> 